Hey everybody, the Network Berg here. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we'll be going over how to create a NAT rule on a 40 gate device. Um, I will be showing you this on the GUI and we'll be using this example that you see in front of you on GNS3. It's a very simple, straightforward setup. Um, I've got an FTP server here, which is actually just a Mikrotik router, which I've got FTP enabled on. We're gonna configure a little bit of an IP address there to do that FTP test. And then we've got my computer here. We're gonna give it a fake, let's say, it, it's not really a public IP if you, if you know your IP ranges, but it looks kind of like one. So we'll, we'll use this as a public IP address. And then you can almost imagine that would be my computer coming from the internet to the 40 gate, which will then NAT the traffic to an FTP server for us so that we can connect to that FTP server, transfer some files, uh, download some files, etc. So let's get started. Before we can actually do any of the 40 gate setup, I just quickly need to enable the service on this Mikrotik router. And it's gonna be very quick to do. So I just want to give the Mikrotik the same IP addresses in the topology quickly. 10.50.1.2.1. Slash 24 on ether ether one. <clears throat> okay, that's perfect. And also I just want to check my IP services. So I do have FTP running. So all that I well I don't need to do anything else actually. This should be fine. Uh, this shouldn't pose any problem. So I'm going to close off the FTP server and we're going to just quickly do some configuration on the 40 gate and it's going to be very base config I'm just going to add some IP addresses so that we can actually access the 40 gate GUI over from my computer admin blank config system interface so we just want to assign the IP addresses quickly uh, edit port one. Let's just make sure port one goes to the FTP server. So we're gonna set the mode to static so that we can configure an IP address on this port. And we're just going to set the IP to 10.50.1.1 slash 24. Okay, that's good. Next, and oh, there's one more thing I, I need to do on the Mikrotik before I forget. I just want to add a route out to the 40 gate so we can just do a IP route add. Destination is any, and my gateway will be 10511. Okay, so the router or the FTP server should have internet access if set up correctly and also the 40 gate has an IP address now so it should be able to communicate with the router the server there we go so I just want to edit another port config system interface edit port port 10 that's what I've connected my computer onto we're gonna set the mode should already be static for this, but let's just do it for best practice. And let's set a IP as one, 169.255.254.1. Let's make it a slash 30 as on the example. Okay. And now I just need to update the IP address on my computer. And that will be relatively quick. Um, network and sharing. Let's just change the adapter settings. Okay. That's actually not what I want to update. It's the VMNet 2. It's a virtual uh, adapter that I've got running from my laptop running over a VM. 
I usually use these IP address settings. You'll see it a lot in a lot of my other videos. Uh, but just for this, we'll use this 169.255.254.2 address. We did make it a slash 30. And 169.255. Well, we won't add a default gateway. We'll add a static route. We don't even need to add a static route. It will already be on this computer's networks. So if I go into my command prompt quickly, let's see if I can ping that 169.255.254.1. I cannot ping it, but I'm pretty sure I know why. Let's just quickly edit that interface again. Edit port 10, set allow access. Let's just allow ping, HTTP, <coughs> HTTPS, Telnet and SSH. And next, and there we go. Now I have access to the firewall. So the next step will be quite straightforward. I'm just going to open up a browser. I'll be using IE for this. 169.255.254.1. And this brings me to my FortiGate login page. So we can log in admin and whatever your password is. Okay, now we're getting to the, the good bit. We've got a FortiGate VM up and running and we've got our interfaces configured to our server and our um, client, our computer. So what I want to do now is just quickly go into the policy and objects, go into virtual IPs. We'll click on the create new button. We'll say a virtual IP. We'll call this FTP NAT 169.255.254.1 um, to 10.50.1.2. Let's just add the ports as well, just for our own reference. We can add a comment, we can call it FTP inbound NAT. We can set the interface to which port we want, but generally you can just leave this on any. It makes it easier for any future uh, changes you might need to make to the rule. External IP. So here we're going to use the firewalls IP address 169, but it's preferable that you don't always use the firewalls address. You, you should probably uh, try and get a bigger IP pool, like a slash 29 or something where you've got an available IP address that you can just use for netting. But for our example, let's just use this one. And let's say we will map the address to 10.50.1.2. We can set this up for port forward and we're going to do it for this example. Uh, but if you cl click OK, you've basically made a one to one NAT where you've essentially assigned an IP, a public IP, or an external IP to an internal IP. When we do port forwarding, we can only forward certain ports on that IP address. So that makes it quite nice if you have limited IP addresses and you want to use multiple services maybe on a single IP address. So let's say FTP or DNS or something, you, you want your DNS to go to one server and your FTP to a different one, this is where you'd use that. So let's just make our external port here 21 because that will be the FTP port and what will we map it to well that's the port it's going to connect to on the internal device so that will also be 21 it will be TCP and let's just okay the rule or the NAT rule that that's just the virtual IP we've added we still need to add this to a policy on the firewall else it will not do anything so let's go into our policies Click create new, FTP inbound NAT, that's the name. The port that it's coming in is port 10. The outgoing interface will be port one in my example. My source address will be from all. It's just generally with the internet NAT based rule, you, you might make it all because people might connect from a lot of different service providers which have different IP addresses. Um, but if you know which IP addresses they are going to be connecting from, they've got static IPs or you know the IP ranges of their service provider maybe, you can define the sources here just for some extra security. 
And then our destination address will be the NAT rule we've added. Here you see virtual IP. We're going to always run this, but you could set up a schedule if you wanted to. And we are going to select the service as FTP. Now, I, I know this confuses a lot of people because they see this NAT button here and they're like, okay, I need to press this to make it NAT. Um, no. So when you see this NAT option here, this is primarily what the policy will do with any traffic that it hits. And um, will it keep the traffic the same or will it NAT it out um, when it leaves the interface? So this would apply an additional NAT to your policy. It, it can be useful for certain things, um, definitely like root leaking, but for our example, we are not going to use this. We're just gonna leave that empty. We're not gonna NAT the traffic. You, you will primarily see this rule for things that you are sending out to the internet where you might NAT the traffic out. We're not gonna apply any of the security profiles. We can log the sessions if we want to. And that is it really. We don't need to add anything else. We can click OK. And now we've got our policy here. So we've got an FTP inbound NAT, anything coming in on port 10, going to port one from anywhere to that NAT rule we specified on the FTP port will be allowed. So do I have a client? No, okay, so we will just quickly, and it is quick, well, we, we, we don't essentially need to get files or something. We can just go onto our browser quickly. We go 169.255.254.1 and we can connect to this over FTP. Username is the same as what it would be on the Mikrotik router. I just left that admin and no password. And here we are on the FTP. So we've connected onto the FTP server if there was any fly files, we would be able to download them. We would be able to copy files as well. Okay, let's let's just do it this way. Uh, view, let's say open FTP in File Explorer, because we should be able to copy this through the File Explorer. If you don't mind, else let's do it here. 169.255.254 admin okay there we go there's the file explorer so if I wanted to I could now copy um, some small file in there let's copy these books in there and there we go as easy as that and that's it guys that's literally it we've added a natural on the 40 gate firewall to an ftp server and we tested and saw that it is working as well so it's pretty straightforward i'll create another video explaining a what they call an ha nat or a virtual server but uh, if you work on firewalls a lot of the times you'll be adding similar nat rules uh, just make sure that you always try and define your policies as much as possible uh, just to ensure that you don't have any weak points in your system. So thanks again for watching. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And please think about sharing this with your friends. It does help grow the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.